Welcome to BeatSource Tech. My name is Mojax and regular viewers will know that I'm a big fan of rotary mixers. It's one of those niche categories within the DJ equipment world which I think is just full of passion and creativity and I love to see that. However, the barrier to entry in the rotary scene has traditionally been fairly high. Thankfully, we have seen a few more budget options hit the market in recent years and today we're looking at the most affordable rotary I've examined here on the channel to date, the R2 from Headliner. In the absence of many new reveals from the big names at the NAM show this year, that left two products as the most talked about. The Hercules T7, which I've already reviewed here on the channel, and this, the Headliner R2, a two-channel analog rotary mixer. It immediately caught my attention mostly thanks to the price. With a street price of $399 in the US, it's not the cheapest rotary out there. That crown is still held by the Omnitronic TRM202 or the almost identical Sub-Zero DMR200, but neither of those are officially distributed in North America as far as I know. So that's definitely a factor in the R2's favour. It's distributed in the US by Mixware, one of the biggest in the game, and so should be readily available to American buyers. The first thing to discuss is the build. Perhaps today's tech market full of plastic controllers has skewed my perspective, but these days it's always a pleasant surprise to encounter something so affordable and yet so solid. The mixer has an all-metal construction aside from the wood panels on the side which are removable if you aren't a fan or want to make the mixer slightly more compact for travel. I really like the use of the one big folded panel for the top, front and rear. It gives the R2 a really clean look. All the pots have metal shafts and are bolted to the faceplates, reinforcing that solid feel. Headliner says the R2 has genuine Alps potentiometers, although they don't specify which ones those are, but all of them feel good anyway and the main rotary pots are especially smooth. One slight annoyance, the posts are splined with knobs to match and on a couple of them on my review unit, the treble controls on both channels, they don't quite point completely straight up when set at neutral, which I'm sure will irritate those who are really fussy about such things, but it doesn't impact on performance in any way. Moving on to the sound, look, if you're hoping that for $400, Headliner have somehow miraculously produced a rotary which competes with the boutique offerings on the market in terms of audio, you're going to be disappointed. Like the Omnitronic mixers I've tested before, the sound is not displeasing. It reminds me of the kind of analogue mixers which were in every DJ's bedroom 20 years ago. It doesn't have the refinement of a higher-end rotary. It's much more brash, more forward, but still distinctly analogue in nature. The same goes for the Phono preamps specifically. When comparing vinyl rips done with the R2 and the Master Sounds 4V, it's obviously not in the same class, but still perfectly acceptable just with a very different character. One thing I did enjoy was the clean stereo separation with a very clear and wide soundstage, but ultimately the R2 is a $400 mixer and it sounds like one. To get anything that sounds really superior to this and offers summing performance even approaching that of a boutique rotary, you'd have to jump up to something like the Eckler Warm 2, which is almost double the price of the R2. Connectivity is as comprehensive as it needs to be considering the features on offer. Each channel has separate line and phono inputs and there are two outputs, master and booth, each with their own level control. They also both feature balanced XLRs and unbalanced RCAs, so it will be easy to hook up the R2 in both home and professional environments. Although the R2 features an external power supply and I generally prefer a built-in one with an IEC connector for convenience, I do really like the use of a locking mini XLR plug for that power supply. It gives you the confidence that it won't get pulled out accidentally and is a really nice touch at this price point. Around the front there's a microphone input with my preferred combo balance jack and XLR socket and its own level control. You'll hear this in use in my demo shortly, but suffice it to say although it's basic it does the job very well with plenty of headroom for quieter mics. There's also both sizes of headphone socket on the front panel. At this point I'll take you through a demo of the features on the R2 and then I'll come back to you with my conclusions. So when we look at the R2 it is very simple but that's kind of the point of this mixer. It's designed not to be overly complex. There isn't too much going on. It's nice, simple and straightforward. It's all about the kind of blending and working records together. And from that point of view, yeah, it's pretty successful. We have the main rotary knobs. With a nice smooth curve and they feel good in hand as well. Nice, not too heavy, not too light, really nicely balanced. Obviously they will loosen up over time as all rotaries do, but yeah, right now out of the box feel really nice. 
and they both feel very consistent as well with each other that's something that sometimes on more affordable rotaries that can be an issue some feel tighter some feel looser on here they both feel exactly the same to use So very smooth from that point of view. You have a cue button on each channel with an accompanying LED. And then in the middle, you've got the cue level, cue master blend, and you also have split cue as well. So that's very useful for those who are mixing at home in headphones, etc. Not something you find on that many mixers in this category. So I'm delighted to see it here. Then we have the EQs. So we've got low, mid and high, all of which have full cut and a plus 9 dB boost. So not the most extreme boost out there, but enough to give it a kick. And you can see we have a peak LED on each channel as well. There aren't separate VU meters for each channel. You can only see the master output on here. That is the only thing you will ever see on the meters is the master output. So it's good you've got that peak LED. And that LED is post EQ as well. So when you boost everything, you can see it starts to peak there. So that's the low end. The crossover points, from what I'm hearing, seem to be quite low on the low end. So you've got quite a big midsection. It's not just taking out the sub, but it is not the lowest I've ever heard. And then you've got correspondingly quite a wide mid. But there you can see we have that full cut. But of course, some people will be bemoaning the lack of a master isolator on a rotary like this. And I get that, but you do have full isolator for each channel, effectively. So if you want to work things or just adjust things, you can do that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the cutoff points. off nicely on the top end then you've got a gain control on each one phono line switches and that is almost it apart from obviously we have the mic input which is on the front just has a level control no on off switch but that is an xlr combo jack socket and i'm running into that mic right now so you're hearing me through the mic of the r2 so i'm very happy with the mic The last thing to talk about is the one thing on the R2 that I think is not entirely successful, and that is the filter. So we have two options for the filter, high pass and low pass, switchable there with that button. The issue is, and I've had this on other more affordable rotaries as well, like the Omnitronic 422 that I reviewed a while back, it does pop when you engage it. So listen. It's a fairly noticeable pop. It's never not there. And the problem is there's no way with any resonance setting to get the exact same sound. So when you kick it in, there will always be a change to the sound. So even with the resonance up full, You can hear it's taking out a little bit of the bass still when I engage it. Does 
but it is a great filter when it's engaged. Again, a really big control knob for it, like the main rotaries. You go smooth or full on resonance. But yeah, again, it's just getting in and out of it is a problem. And I wouldn't want to leave it engaged all the time because as I say, then you, yeah, you can have both channels engaged, but you don't get quite the same sound. You are changing the sound up. You just lose a little bit of that kick in the low end. And again, we've got the high pass, or low pass rather. Again, it sounds really good. And again, though, not quite the same sound, engaging and disengaging, and you can hear the popping. So that's not to say there aren't uses for it. Like if I was gonna play an acapella, I would probably engage the filter before I bring that acapella into the mix and then I could work the filter on the acapella or something like that or just running like a drum loop or something. But for generally playing with, you know, two records side to side, I would have a hard time integrating this filter into my sets. And so it's not, there's no downside to having it there. I just think I would probably never use it in the same way that I would not use the one on the Omnitronic because it's just, it's a cool effect, but coming in and out of it, it's just not that practical as far as I'm concerned. But everything else in terms of the controls, super simple, but also kind of super smooth and really, really nice to use. Everything feels great, it's spaced out nicely, lots of room to work with everything. So it is a very nice mixer to handle I'm just not convinced by that filter. So there you go, my thoughts on the R2 rotary mixer from Headliner. The important thing is when you're looking at this product is to retain a sense of perspective because no, from a sound, build and feature set point of view, it is not going to compete with the likes of Master Sounds, Resor, Condessa or Alpha. But of course it's not because it's not anywhere near the same price category as those. And that makes this quite a valuable product in the market because we need affordable entry points into the world of rotary mixing. Rotary mixing is not for everybody. You know, and you might be rotary curious. You might think, I fancy giving that rotary stuff a try. But then, you know, should your only option be to drop a couple of thousand bucks and wait three months for a really, really high end mixer to arrive, then you play with it for a month and think, actually, no, it's not for me and then you're gonna lose loads of money selling it on and it's a massive hassle, etc. So I absolutely think it's great to have these affordable entry points into the rotary world like the R2, and there have been others, but this is the first one I believe that is readily available in the United States. So if you're in the US, you know, you can pick this up from your local DJ equipment retailer. You don't have to wait to have it shipped from Europe and with all the accompanying extra costs and the shipping times, etc. So yeah, I think that's really important too. Taking it out of the rotary context and just looking at it as a mixer in its price range, I think it's pretty successful too. It's very well made for the money. The build quality is excellent. There are some really nice attention to detail touches on there like the locking power supply, like the two sets of XLRs. There are also a couple of missteps. Like I'm not a fan of that filter. I'd rather it just wasn't there, to be honest. But overall, yeah, for the money, I think it's a very solid product. So if you are rotary curious, if you want to give rotary mixing a try and you only have a limited budget or want to spend a limited amount of money, I think the R2 is gonna be a really, really good choice for you. In the comments this week, I wanna hear from the rotary heads. What was the first rotary mixer you used? Was it a more affordable one? What Did you go straight to the high end? And what do you think would be your choice if someone came to you and said, I wanna get into rotary mixing today in 2023, what would you recommend to them? Thank you for watching this episode of BeatSource Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.